Are you looking at getting more out of your Apple HomeKit based smart home? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get more out of your existing setup. Let's dig in. In this channel, we look at making the most out of our smart home, focused mostly on Apple HomeKit, but dabbling in the other ecosystems as well. If you think that might interest you, consider mashing that subscribe button and, uh, you know, sticking around for the journey. In this particular video, we are going to talk about automation. So let's get this out of the way first. What actually is an automation? An automation is something where you trigger a specific sequence of actions based on something. Now, what is that something? That could be just about anything. The most common might be a voice command. You might have a time-based automation, but the beauty of Apple HomeKit is you can trigger on just about anything that exists in your smart home or more accurately in the Apple HomeKit database. So the most common one we think about in smart homes is the voice command. When I say, What's gonna happen is she's gonna hear that and then do whatever I tell her to do. That's the voice command trigger. Other really, really common ones in the smart home space are things like triggering based on motion detectors, triggering based on the press of a button. Uh, but you know, going from there, triggering based on humidity, based on time of day, time of day based actions, right? When you're in the house, when you're out of the house, when you arrive home, all these things, but you can trigger on other things as well, like when a light bulb is turned to a specific color, when a um, smart plug, if it exposes the amount of electricity it is, starts charging, right? All those kinds of things. You can do just about any trigger at all in an Apple HomeKit based home. So once a trigger is detected by your home hub, Effectively, it's just going to execute whatever is in that scene list of which you have real simple actions. You can turn lights on or off, plugs on or off, uh, blinds up or down, all those kinds of scenes. So when we look at what we're going to be doing in our scenes, it really comes down to five categories. You've got power, plugs on and off. You've got lighting, changing colors, brightness. You've got air quality, uh, temperature. I would include thermostats, humidifiers, those kinds of things in this. You've got sound. You've got the ability to make airplay uh, two targets play things. And of course, I'm going to throw everything else that doesn't fit into those, which is honestly, there's not much there anymore into the other section. So going back to the, the start of the video, I promised you I was going to help you simplify your automations a little bit. And I'm going to show you ex uh, a specific example of what I did recently. So the kind of the first question when I start doing this is what do I want to happen? So let's look at spe a specific use case. The first question to ask ourselves is what do we want to happen? What do I want to happen? So in my case that we're going to dig into here is to look at the master bathroom. And in my master bathroom, I would like when someone walks into the master bathroom, I want two things to happen. I want the lights to turn on and I want the exhaust fan to turn on to kind of get rid of the humidity. There's a shower in this room. Um, this is a real common automation that people uh, like to set up. So let's look at what that looks like. We're going to log into our Apple phone or iPad. We're going to go in and we're going to create this automation using a scene. So for something simple like this, just create a single scene. Uh, there's no conditionals here that we're worried about. We're just going to create a scene that says, turn the lights on and turn the bathroom on, right? Simple enough. So now that we've got the, what do I want to happen figured out, kind of the next question when we start to simplify and think of how we're going to use our house is when do I want these things to happen? So we did a real simple automation to begin with. So now let's evolve the automation by asking the question, when do I want this to happen? Because I've got a simple thing happening. Yeah, absolutely, it's gonna trigger every time. It's consistent, it's great. The exhaust fan turns on and the light turns on. But now I'm blinded in the middle of the night if I have to get up and go to the bathroom. So the next question, when do I want these things to happen? That's an important thing to ask. We can now split this up and say, maybe we wanna create two scenes. We wanna have a daytime scene and a nighttime scene. This is really easy to understand. I'm going to create two different scenes here, and the scene that is in the daytime is going to turn the lights full blast, turn the exhaust uh, fan on. Awesome. And then maybe I am going to go back and alter that trigger. So now it's not just when the motion sensor detects motion. It's if the motion sensor detects motion and the time range is between, say, 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., then execute on the automation that is the daytime master bathroom automation. Pretty cool, right? And then we're gonna create a second automation, which is really similar to the first, but instead we're gonna change the time range. We're gonna say if motion's detected and time is between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., so the exact opposite of the first one, then we're gonna execute the second scene, which is master bathroom 
uh, nighttime scene. So what's in the master bathroom nighttime scene? Well, in this one, I don't want to turn the exhaust fa fan on because I'm not having a shower at night. No need for that. Humidity's not high, and I don't want to wake anybody up with that noise. Maybe all I want to do is to turn the lights maybe on to 2 or 3% so I don't stumble and trip. You know, it's safe, but I'm also not blinding myself. So at this point, we've done some fairly simple automations. Everything is good, but we can continue to evolve this by the beauty of the convert to shortcut action. And so how are we gonna do that? We're going to remove one of those two automations by putting this all together in a single convert to shortcut. So for those of you who haven't seen this, once you scroll down to the bottom of that list, you have the ability to convert any of your automations convert to shortcut at the bottom. So a shortcut is, um, in essence, this is a stripped down version of the full series shortcuts. And as far as I can tell, the reason for that is because the shortcut itself is going to run on your home hub. So whether that's your Apple TV or a home hub, this will work, but it also means that you don't have access to all the additional shortcuts that you may have on your phone. So we are restricted by our actions here, but there is enough to do a lot. This is super powerful. Let me show you how. So instead of those two separate automations that we created originally, I'm gonna drag that all into here and I'm going to create a single automation with that same logic to say, look at the time of day. So I'm going to get the current time, I'm going to strip out only the hours out of that, and I'm gonna look at the hours. This is a 24 base hour clock, so military time, European time, whatever we wanna call that. And essentially now I just have to look at it and create a conditional if statement. So even if you're not a programmer, this is really easy to understand. It's a simple, if do this, if not, do something else, right? It's that simple. And in this case, I'm going to do a check to say, does the number, does the hours, is that a number between seven and 21? 21 being 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Then I'm going to execute the master bathroom daylight scene. The second statement says that if I don't match the first one, just do the second scene, which is the master bathroom night scene, which is kind of awesome, right? We've taken those two separate automations, all that work, and we've got it into this nice little condensed piece of uh, convert to shortcut covering the single bathroom. So now that we've got it converted this to the shortcut, I'm gonna give you guys some more ideas of how we could pull a lot more into this and make your automations more powerful. I did not wanna stop at the time of day because there's other things I wanted to accomplish. So now that we've got the convert to shortcut figured out, we just go back and we ask ourselves that first question again. What do I want to happen? What do I want to happen? I wanna turn the bathroom exhaust fan on. Right, so that's a simple one. We can create an automation scene for that or because it's built within the Apple Home app, I can trigger the accessory directly, which is kind of cool. The second question that we needed to ask ourselves, if you remember, is when do I want this to happen? So I don't want a simple logic of when somebody walks in the bathroom, just turn on the exhaust fan. That's easy. I want to do something a little more elegant than that. I want to take into account the current relative humidity in the room just outside the master bathroom. So how do we do this? Well, this is actually pretty simple. Using the get status shortcut, I have the ability to get the status of the relative humidity sensor in the Eve room, which is in the master bedroom right outside my master bathroom. So I'm gonna use that as the check to say, hey, if this thing is above 50% relative humidity, turn on the exhaust fan. If it's not, recycle that humidity, recycle that heat, and let it float out into the master uh, bedroom after you know, after your shower's over. Pretty easy to do. Again, using the conditionals here, really simple. We're gonna check and then we're gonna going to compare the current state against a value, right? You can see here in the logic, pretty simple. If the current relative humidity is greater than 50%, then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna execute the bathroom exhaust action. I'm gonna turn that on, good to go. Awesome. There's a lot more we can do here. There's a lot more functionality and we're going to dig into those in the future. But I wanted to get you guys something that was pretty simple to understand to start opening your eyes on how you can consolidate this. So hopefully I've given you guys a little recipe to be able to start being more efficient with your automations and start helping to really figure out how your house is going to be more effective at responding to your needs and just making your life a little easier. There is a lot of power in the Convert to Shortcuts and there's a lot more that we can dig into. So definitely let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see, kind of more building of these shortcuts over time on some of the things that I'm doing in my house. If you've got any comments, questions, any of those things, corrections even, put those in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. 
And at this point, this is where YouTube should be putting a video here or here that they think you might be interested in watching now.